you've probably already heard about Edgar Wright. You've heard about how he got rejected to film school twice. And you've heard about how he managed to develop his own style, being established as one of the most respected directors nowadays. So here I want to discuss how he does it and why you should too. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Right now I got to tell you about. One of the things that characterizes style is the long take, with nicely planned camera movement filled with action. And while you can see here how good directors work, they script everything and they rehearse until they've reached the final cut they love. Every sound, every movement and action he wants was written down and the edit will strongly rely on that. Well, he was obviously not the first one to do this and a good half of every famous director you can think of has already tried it, sometimes creating masterpieces. The truth is, the long take is a powerful way to tell a story because it appears a lot like real life so it appeals to us in a very pure way. Also, the amount of detail you can insert in a take relies mainly on how creative you want to be, and that is why the good directors tend to deliver something beautiful that was carefully planned out and rehearsed. Now, you must understand, for Edgar Wright, everything is synced to the beat. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Every moment, and act, and even expressions, he matches everything to the beat, and that has a huge psychological effect on the viewer. Now, for the sake of a good explanation, I'll have to pick a few scenes to break down. But what you have to take in consideration is that almost everything you see on the screen was cut to the beat and directed that way. And yes, you could take the very obvious examples where he clearly plays with the music in the background and the ones where he makes jokes with the lyrics. But the real treat comes when he uses sounds in favor of movement. Quite often you can see people walking to the beat and jamming on it. I see this as a very big filmmaking challenge and I wonder how they do it in the set to achieve things like the boy playing with the football here. Talking about movement, just watch these scenes where he uses different sounds to move the camera. Like Here. Sorry? Let's start with Launchpad McQuack. Here. Uh, that's not the actual title. And okay, me and also here. Good now, right? Some scenes Whatever. he uses them with oh, actions, like for the kettle whistle. That here. Good to me. Let me get you a blanket. And others he uses them with expressions. See if you can spot them. She's Chinese. Wicked. They are incredibly subtle, and most people wouldn't even see if not told to, but they go into our brain and grab hold of our attention. Listen to the sound of the door closing with his head movement. Do you know that girl? Scott! What? And as I'll keep saying, he's great with jokes and puns. What are you doing? And it just gets us hooked to the story, even if you're not really looking for the details. Music is a great deal to his movies. That is why the soundtrack is so carefully picked, in a way that it entertains the viewer with music, but also with how it enables his edit style to breathe. That way he'll get his actors to dance and sing to the music, and even play their own music. You will constantly be reminded of how important music is, because the characters show how much they enjoy it, and he even points it out sometimes. But what really impressed me while breaking this down is that there's no such thing as silence in his movies. There's always some sort of noise going in the background. I've talked about the long take, and I've talked about how he uses sound, but what probably separated him from everyone else were the jump cuts. A jump cut, as it says by itself, is a cut that jumps in time, meaning it skips actions that would exist in real life, and it sticks to what the editor wants you to focus on. 
he uses it in a very smart way and he adds a lot of sound and foley to it making the whole thing a lot richer and he was also not the first one to do this but he crafted his own style developing it as a very powerful tool to tell a story he tends to ally this to creative transitions and once again as i said a lot of jokes oh, and puns you are pulling my leg this is about to go off no, sorry. The result is something really entertaining to watch, what? because he brings comedy and intensity to the story, just because of how he shapes and cuts the takes. I don't believe this. Okay now, observe how he directs the cut with the character's actions, eye movement, and the head movement. He is always bringing in some more creativity and you might remember my last video about Sherlock and how they used creative transitions one of the things I mentioned in it was the pass-by effect Edgar Wright uses it all the time and I mean non-stop one after the other they are usually used to jump forwards in the story still giving a sense of continuity but interesting enough they get to be seamless because of how well directed and edited they are the cuts are also made with a good sound design, bringing even more life to it and making the absorption for the viewer much more natural. Another concept he puts to work is of the frame within frame. Once again, self-explanatory, the frame within frame consists of having a frame line guiding your attention to some place, something or someone in the actual framing. And it might be a proper frame, or it just might be a hole in the screen that directs your eye to what he wants to show you. It might even be used to show the interaction of the characters with the space around them. And studying his movies, you might see him using effects like the lens flare that got popular with J.J. Abrams, lots and lots of visual effects, and slow motion scenes and sometimes even a great use of practical effects, like changing the light to create a mood and tell a better story. My final thought is about him being a comedian. After all, humor has a constant participation in his movies, coming in ways that we can relate to and repeating itself so we can create a link between his movies and the craft he has mastered. And it's paramount to say that he would have never accomplished all of this by himself, from the start of his work in the British television to nowadays, he always had a fantastic cast and crew working side to side with him. And in the end, everything sums up to grab your attention and conquer you psychologically with visual and sound, composition and edit. Just so he can tell the story effectively, making sure that we all enjoy the same beat. Hello guys, so this was a lot of fun and just like last time of course But what really um, gave me the energy to come back and do this again uh, Was you guys and like leaving comments below telling me uh, how it helped with your own projects and um, Thanking me for making such thing and telling me how how well made it was so this is really great um, Like let's do it again crush that like button subscribe and um, Share with friends that enjoy the same thing that we do anyway about Edgar Wright. I really love him. I think he's different from everyone else um, that directs nowadays and uh, the thing that I enjoy the most is because I edit on the beat myself and I think everyone should because psychologically it has a great effect on the viewer um, people don't really tend to notice but it just gets into their brain and makes the experience of like watching a video a lot better so try to do that yourself and it might just help whatever you do a video it might help anyway I have lots of links to put here 
uh, on the description and I will so please check them out mainly they are uh, like breakdowns from people that I enjoy talking about subjects that I mentioned in this video or things that I just think uh, are important and uh, probably a tutorial about uh, how to make that pass by effect that I've mentioned quite a few times now anyway uh, my name is Conrad and I make noises <laughs>